Okay, my name is Robert Waterman, and I was born 6-21-29. I was born in Gardner and brought up on a dairy farm in Sabatis. My father and grandfather and, and grandmother had moved from Buckfield to Sabatis in 1919. They bought a farm here, and that was the farm that I was brought up on. I lived there my entire life, for, uh, basically, until the last 10 or 15 years. My father, unfortunately, came down when I was eight years old, spinal meningitis in the middle of the winter, and in those days, nobody knew what it was. Three days later, he was dead. The farm and all of his things fell in my mother's lap, and she was a very, very exceptional woman. She ran the farm, she taught school, she did everything that could be asked, kept the farm going with the help of a real good hired man that we had. I get through school. School came easy to me. I could, for some reason, easily assimilate what education was. And uh, my mother, being a school teacher, uh, uh, she kind of shuffled me th through the school quite rapidly. Skipped three grades. Ended up graduating from high school when I was 15. I applied to go to the University of Maine. I was going to be 16 years old when I went, and the dean of the College of Agriculture at the time um, wanted to be sure that I was mature enough to go to college. He paid me a visit. He drove himself down 100 miles away just to see me. And that particular day that he came was in July. We were haying and I was way over in the back field somewhere raking hay. And he uh, walked over to see me, to talk to me. Well, needless to say, I guess he thought I was mature enough and I went to college. Graduated from the University of Maine, cum laude, at the ripe old age of 19. I graduated in 1949 and came back home uh, to, to the farm. We had a herd of dairy cows and there were a few registered animals, but I had an interest in having a good purebred herd of cattle. My goal was to improve the herd. I bought my first heifer at a main state sale. That particular animal went on to establish what we call our cherry family. We have many descendants of that animal that have been wonderful for the herd. They've been nice to look at. Uh, we probably have bred close to 40 excellence out of that family now and good production and nice animals to work with. We get into embryo work. Uh, we sold embryos. We bought embryos and bought animals as we could. I have just one brother when he got out of college, he, uh, four years later than I did, uh, he uh, decided to join the service. One of us would have to go, and so he joined the Marines two and a half years later. He came home to the farm. We had the, still that same good, real good hired man, two college graduates on a farm of milking about 40 animals and decided to look around for something else to do to go with the farming. That was when we saw an ad in the paper one day for uh, a machinery company looking for representation in the area and uh, 
turned out that it was the International Hives, the company, was looking for a new dealer. Uh, and so my brother and I applied and was reviewed and finally mm -hmm. awarded the contract to sell International Harvester farm equipment. So we started what we call and named the company Waterman Farm Machinery Company. We had an old wooden building that we started. We borrowed $10,000 to renovate the building and took half of it for, for a shop area and the other half we converted into Pat's bins and started our equipment business in 1956. My oldest son, Bob, is the sales manager. My brother has two boys that work in the business. They are very instrumental. What we started but they've continued and improved and widened it, built new buildings and modern, up-to-date uh, shop, parts, of course, all the, and it's about 18 employees there now, and it's grown into a, you know, a good-sized business. So I'll go back to one of my college friends. So here I, I was pledged by Alpha Gamma Rho and joined the fraternity and it turned out that my college roommate in the fraternity was Otto Wallingford and they were, he was from Marburg. But these here I am a teenager, men coming back after serving in the wartime uh, in their mid-twenties and but uh, he and I struck up. He liked to hunt and fish, and I did, and we became roommates, the best of friends, and hunted and fished for the rest of, <coughs> of our lives as, uh, over quite a large area, and certainly enjoyed the. And there was about the four or five other people from the area that became really d dear friends of and we had some great hunting and fishing trips, been to Labrador. Uh, so my life has been involved in, I guess, work, been a lot of play. I have four sons and a daughter, and the family has been a very important thing, and we certainly have enjoyed the camaraderie and the watching the family grow up, and all turn out to be uh, good citizens, uh, contributing to the world and the, with their own families now. A few years ago, we were have we have a camp on Little Kennebago Lake, but we like to hunt up there too, and it's been great fishing. But this we were there with our novel five or six hunting buddies and so it got to be the end of the week and we uh, had, hadn't uh, put any game on the table yet so I said to my friend David Sampin so I said David let's get up this was Saturday morning and get up and get going at daylight so he says yeah okay so we Get up and the truck was all frosted up, the windows were frosted up and turned on the truck and the heater for a few minutes and backed out into the road, hadn't even got all the frost off the windshield yet, backed into the road out of the dooryard and started down the road. We went about 300 yards and David I mean, was looking at the road and he was looking out sideways and he said, whoa! There's one right there. And I had got by, there were some trees there, and I had to back up to see it. And this animal was standing right up on a ridge, right beside us, stock still. The sun was just barely coming up, and there was a fresh snow that night, and it was silhouetted right there. I got out of the truck, and I 
pulled up my rifle with a scope, put it right behind his shoulder and fired, and down he went. And David was sitting still in the truck, just watching. He said, he said what happened? Where'd he go? I said, he dropped right there. Well, it, he had said this was a buck. He said, there's a buck. So I didn't look to see if he had any horns, and I just dropped the animal. Then he said, well, it was a buck. I said, David, I didn't look. You said it was a buck. So anyway, we get up there. He does not have any horns. But after closer examination, it was a good-sized animal, and it had horns that had been broken off. There was the stub of a horn about an inch long that was, and it was a bark, no question about that, but if I had looked at its head through my scope, I wouldn't have seen any horns, and I probably wouldn't even have shot. But this ends up being a buck that weighed about 180 pounds. And so anyway, we gutted the animal out, and we dragged it down over the hill, it was all downhill, dragged it right up on the porch of the camp, and says, here, we got the first one, we'll go get some more. <laughs> and here I sit, the, and we are leaving in about a week, my wife and I, to go to Florida. And uh, we'll spend the winter in Florida, which we enjoy, and play golf and down there and so on. That was the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs>